Okay, we're going out on video chat right now. Sportsnet's Arash Madani joins us from, I can only imagine, the big smoke. Good morning, Arash. Where are you today? Good afternoon, Mr. Peterson. I'm in my humble abode, heading to the ballpark in uh, about an hour for that. So go see David Price again. What kind of reaction will he get? Uh, I think it's been so long now, Rod. I mean, you know, he pitched here in 2015, won the World Series last year with Boston. And, you know, for right now with this with this baseball team, it, it's really about the kids. It's about Kevin Biggio doing what he's doing. Of course, it's about Vlad. Trent Thornton gets the ball tonight. What a revelation he's been as a, as a pitcher. But uh, for the Blue Jay fans out there who remember David Price in 2015 and 2016, it's going to be a few more years before they get back to that kind of status. Nobody out here yet is talking about the Blue Jays, so we won't today. The last time sure. you were on with us, I believe, was in advance of Game 5 of the NBA Finals. A lot has happened since then, my friend. Um, mm-hmm. g- give us your thoughts on the Raptors, the run, the parade. You were just spellbound. I was following your Twitter. And now where we sit today with Kawhi, if you don't mind. Well, I mean, if you want to start with the parade, uh, that was something. Um, they, they use Rod, the Santa Claus parade model. Every December, Toronto has a Santa Claus parade. And they said, okay, well, we're going to use the logistics and the things that are happening with that for this. Well, the problem was 2 million more people showed up and they're just pushing barricades onto the street. Everybody wants a look. So the bus was unable to, to turn at, at different places. But more than 2 million people showed up. And that really, to me, signifies just how badly this city, this market, was was in need of a championship, craved a championship, and wanted success. And now everybody's winning on Kawhi. You know, throughout the season, the number one water cooler conversation was, will he stay or won't he? Is Kawhi gone or is Kawhi staying? We knew very little about Kawhi Leonard, the person, through the season, through the playoffs. We don't know what motivates him. We don't know what's important to him. And so now Jimmy Butler's decided and KD's decided, you know, Chris Middleton's decided, Tobias Harris has decided, Kyrie, Kemba, on and on it goes. And here's Kawhi just waiting. And he's presumably going to meet with both L.A. teams, and he's said, I'll visit with the Raptors last. Now, I'm told the Raptors are going to have a big pitch and a big presentation for him, but haven't the last six or seven months really been that pitch haven't they been that presentation so it, it really seems like Kawhi's on no rush in no rush and he's on his own timeline which if you followed Kawhi Leonard over the years that shouldn't really be a surprise perhaps a really dumb question but I'm a dumb guy who's the Not bigger enough. star in Toronto right now Johnny T Johnny Hockey oh, Johnny yeah. Tavares or Not even, Kawhi not even close Kawhi even by, close. A, by a mile by a mile they won a championship ride I understand, but I'm not from there. I don't understand these people. Yeah, a Toronto well, guy wants to ask you a question here, but hey, Raj, I, I tell up? you it's what. A, oh, oh, no, no, I'm just saying this. I can't remember a time, even Abu, when you were around the Vince Carter era, where everybody's talking about one thing, and that's is Kawhi coming back or not. <laughs> a rush. I, I, I don't think. Uh, I, I heard a bit of news. Uh, I, I don't think he's coming back. I'm, I'm kind of losing uh, hope there. But what about a sign and trade? Do you think that's something that's possible? And uh, either way, with a, if Kawhi's not in Toronto, what does the team look like next year now that all the names are gone? They got a lot of cap. Well, that's the interesting one because Danny Green's kind of waiting too. And will he follow Kawhi wherever he goes? That you know, Green may end up getting a mid-level exception, so in the you know five to nine million dollar range. But if Kawhi comes back, the whole band's back together mm. because Mark Gasol has picked up his player option for $26.5 million. Lowry's back next year. Ibaka returns. Um, you know, Pascal Siakam's about to sign a massive deal. Fred Van Vliet is locked up long term. So if Kawhi returns a boot, what you're going to have is a scenario where I would suspect he'll sign a one and one, a one year deal plus a player option. For the following year, which would protect him from injury, and then set him up at the age of 29, 
to go sign a $200 million contract somewhere else. That would then set up the Raptors to have, by 2021, Lowry off the books, Ibaka off the books, uh, Gasol off the books, presumably Siakam at a max contract, Van Vliet under contract, and still gives you room to maybe go after Giannis, the MVP. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, now, if Kawhi doesn't come back, the Raptors are fifth in the East next year. You know, they, they slot into that 4-5 matchup likely uh, next spring, and then, you know, they, they get to the second round. Order is restored, so to speak, in Toronto sports. But everything hinges on Leonard. Do you think a sign-in trade's there? Because uh, he can get a little bit more cheese if he signs with, with, the, with the Leafs. I wish. <laughs> the Leafs. Can he skate? <laughs> no. Uh, Peter Mansbridge actually tweeted that out, and Kyle Dubas replied, that's a very good question, Peter, that we're going to look into. Um, what, what motivates Kawhi Leonard, we don't know. But here's what's appealing to him. One is that if he signs a five-year contract with the Raptors, he can make 40 more million dollars than anywhere else. So would it be a sign and play a year and have a handshake agreement with Masai Ujiri? Perhaps. Is it a sign and trade to not leave the franchise hanging? Maybe, but I just don't know what the Clippers and the Lakers really have um, in terms of capital. I mean, the Lakers gave up a ton of draft picks to bring in AD from New Orleans. So is a sign and trade possible? It could be, but in today's NBA, with the dollars that are out there, um, th- that might be a little difficult. One more uh, for a rush from Marshall yeah. Hamilton. A rush. Uh, we've only heard about three teams. We've heard about the Raptors. We've heard about the two LA teams. In my view, based, you know, I've never met Kawhi Leonard. You, you have, but it just doesn't look like the personality. It doesn't look like Kawhi's personality is the type of person that would go to the LA Lakers. It looks like this is the Clippers versus Raptors situation. We just don't know, Marshall. I mean, that, that's what makes this thing so intriguing is that all weekend, you know, $2 billion in NBA contracts went out this weekend. All the big names signed, except Kawhi. You had reports coming out last week that Kawhi and Kevin Durant were, were talking. Well, KD goes to Brooklyn and takes Kyrie Irving along with them. There was thoughts that maybe... Kawhi ends up with the Knicks. Well, that's that's out of the mix, too. It almost seems like the longer this goes, the advantage is in Toronto's lap. But Kawhi's a Southern California guy. Is it important to him now with two kids to be home? We don't know. Um, All everybody is doing is speculating. It's one of the most fascinating times with any professional athlete in any sport I can remember. Usually you have some kind of insight either from the agent or from a sponsor or from a teammate. And all we've heard is a whole bunch of stuff thrown against the wall and seeing what sticks with this guy. I mean, just imagine Kawhi Leonard left 180 million U.S. dollars on the table. Take home, take home from the San Antonio Spurs while he was injured in a season in which he only played nine games. And then he comes to Toronto, and now everybody else is signing these massive deals, and Kawhi is just slow playing his hand. It, you know, look, Abu sitting there. If a team in free agency offers you the biggest contract possible in. in the league, Sign me you're up. in. Game over. What did Joe Pavelski say yesterday, guys? He leaves San Jose after, what, 13 years, goes to Dallas? And the first question was, well, why did you choose the Stars over the Sharks? And he said, well, because the Stars offered me the most money. And he was a team and captain. Right. Um, with Kawhi, it doesn't seem to be that way. And nobody seems to know what the real important factors are to him. It's, it's a real fascinating dynamic. I, I got to ask you this because Rochelle has wrote, written in. I, I promise only one more qu- question, but she says, um, I don't know financials, how it works. Is he paid in Canadian currency? Like, well, no, he, he pays in America. No. He's paid in America. But she's earlier asked about the taxes. For instance, Ryan Getz last paying 61% uh, income yeah. tax in Southern California. We're in Texas, Florida. There is no uh, income tax. Do the players talk about this? 
They do. They do. I'm just, I just brought up on my phone. So Steph Curry's breakdown of his salary. Steph Curry last year made $34.68 million. His take home, I mean, no one's going to, you know, have a GoFundMe page for Steph, <laughs> but his take home was 15.2. So 19 million of his dollars gone. 3.4 to escrow, 11.6 to federal tax. Everyone's got to pay federal tax. Another 4.1 million in state and city taxes. A million goes to his agent. How about that one, Abu? Um, and so 34.6 becomes 15. Now, if he's in Florida or Texas, that's, you know, that's not the, the same. state tax change a little bit. But when you play in the NBA or NFL or NHL, baseball, if you are a member of the Blue Jays, let's say Texas, where there's no state tax, well, when he was with a member of the San Antonio Spurs, if they played a road game in New York, one divided by 82, one eighty-second of his salary would be subjected to New York state tax. So it's just the 41 home games that make a difference. And when you're talking about $30 million, that's a lot of money. Um, so... You know, the one advantage of in Toronto is you get paid in U.S. dollars to pay rent in Canadian dollars and live in Canadian dollars. That's a 35 percent pay hike, too. All right. Well, a lot of people talking about about that in Western Canada, the, the dollars in Kauai. So uh, so thanks for that update, my man. And uh, enjoy the Jays tonight. We'll be watching. All right, fellas. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.